One and a half white guys podcast. Again, you failed to get any views on your previous episodes. So it's be to fall to you to do another millennial nostalgia movie. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was thinking, I was like, who has the better Scooby? I think you have the better Scooby Doo laugh, don't you? <laughs> you look like Shaggy. I, I do. So welcome back to the one and a half white guys podcast or more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and the idea of splitting up to solve a mystery. Don't do it. Did it ever work for them? <laughs> um, At sure. least one of them got captured. Shaggy's going to be finding the kitchen. Velma finds the library. And Freddie and Daphne find an empty bedroom. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fred, you asshole. You only want to do it when there's a guy in a mask around. <laughs> What if they split up for once? Like, Fred, take Scooby. Shaggy, <laughs> go with Daphne. <laughs> Velma's still alone. Fuck Velma. Yeah. We are celebrating the 20th anniversary of a release of a very special movie to us, right, Nick? Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. This one means quite a lot to both of us. Yeah, you saw our earlier one with Cameron. We're doing both of them back to back, but we didn't feel like it would be good to do Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed without doing Scooby Doo 1. But Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed is now entering its. 20th anniversary 2004 when it came out one year later after the original one right we're old everybody oh my god and so are you yeah no that was 20 years ago <laughs> jesus christ before lots of things yeah <laughs> let's not think about this yeah. <laughs> very excited to be doing it now this movie arguably more in line with the original show and more of a love letter to the original show. A love letter is a very good way of putting to it. To the original concept, not just the original show, but all Scooby-Doo media that has come since. Yeah. I grew up on Scooby-Doo. I did too. The original Hanna-Barbera cartoon, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Oh yeah, these live action movies, whether you, no matter what you think about them, to millennials, they really are a, Bel beloved, beloved, but also just a staple of the culture. Oh, too. my God. So much a time capsule, if you will. It, it, it's d so many people know about this movie. Yes, because it's of its reputations. Yes. Some of the jokes have aged OK and some of them have aged poorly. And that really adds to the to the nostalgia of the, the time period that post 9-11 early 2000s time period. 90s com raunchy comedies had, you know, coming of age comedies had come and gone by the wayside now. Mm -hmm. And things are kind of changing little by little into what would eventually be, you know, the comedies of the 2000s, like Super Bad and Drill Bit yeah. Taylor. And hadn't quite gotten to the that Judd Apatow era. Yeah. Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed released in 2004, directed by Raja Gosnell. Starring the same five as the original, reprising their roles, but this time with Seth Green as Patrick Wisely, Alicia Silverstone, famous for Clueless, as not Gail Weathers, <laughs> <laughs> as not Courtney Cox from Scream, but she pretty much is Gail Weathers. Sarah Michelle Gellar doesn't deck her in the face in this, Bam, although, it looks like, down. although it looks Bam. like she's about to at some Bam. point. Sit, super bitch. Cindy, your ass looks fat. What? <laughs> And finally, Peter Boyle is Old Man Wickles, yeah. the origin playing the original villain of the first Scooby Doo, The Black Knight Ghost, the first episode ever made. Mm -hmm. Peter Boyle, if you know who that is, he's the monster in Young Frankenstein. He is. Is he's also uh, who else is he in? Is he in Everyone Loves Raymond? Right? He's yeah, dad. He's, the he's, dad. he's Raymond's dad. Yeah, he's Raymond's dad. <laughs> Uh, Raymond. No, that's that's uh, that's his brother. That's Brad Garrett. Yes, Brad Garrett. <laughs> Freddie Friends Jr. as Fred. Sarah Michelle Geller as Daphne, Linda Cardellini as Velma, the God himself, Matthew Lillard as Norval Shaggy Rogers. And who voiced Scooby-Doo? Neil Fanning. Neil Fanning. This, both this movie and the, the original one, Scooby-Doo one, have probably the most ideal casting of, of the, of the main group. The, it, this is yeah. on par with what I would think the group looks like in real life. Looks like maybe not acts like yes. entirely, but look wise, the good, the way they're costumed is fantastic. I, I, I love it. The it, way it, they carry themselves. They make the characters their own. Should we get to the IMDb summary of the movie, Nick? I got it right here. All right, go ahead. Ah. Oh Lord. I don't anymore. <laughs> 
monsters. The Mystery Inc. gang must save Coolsville from an attack of their past monsters brought to life by an evil masked figure trying to take down the gang. That great, is a, great that, summary. That is a lot. Though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it takes place in Coolsville, which mm -hmm. is where the original cartoon, this is where the gang is from. Yes. If you if you watched a pup named Scooby-Doo, that's where they were at all the time. Because in Scooby-Doo, where are you? They're going off to wherever. They're just like... Oh, Freddy, I can't I, believe I we got a nice vacation out of this. Let's assume that Coolville was just next to all these major <laughs> <laughs> climate change places where it's like they're now they're in a desert. Now they're at an ocean. Now they're in Hawaii. Now they're in Hawaii. Now they're in Canada. <laughs> now they're on the island with a castle on yeah. it. <laughs> now cool. we're in the Arctic. <laughs> all, dri all relatively close by driving. <laughs> and this is where the nostalgia really kicks in is yes. it, it reference it constantly references the old show not mm -hmm. just Scooby-Doo where are you but a couple of the other ones because the pterodactyl ghost is from the Scooby-Doo show yes. and not Scooby-Doo where are you the monsters are from all different Scooby-Doo mm -hmm. media most and of them are from where are you though yeah absolutely a lot of them a lot of them are from and we're very happy to actually have Scooby-Doo with us here today <laughs> uh, in the form of a lunchbox that I found while thrift shopping and you can even see the sticker still oh, sticker still on it right here I can see the price Price tag but right you, under yeah. your wrist. Oh yeah, yeah you can take you can take <laughs> it, but it comes with a Scooby Doo thermos. Check that out, everyone. Ooh, that's right, ladies. Fuck your Stanley <laughs> Cup. <laughs> They got the pterodactyl ghost. They got the tar monster. Tar monster. Captain Cutler's there. The 10,000 volt ghost. Oh, yeah. The cotton candy glob. Cotton candy glob. They have the zombie from the... Uh, the, um, the one the witch, the witch, witch is the witch. Which is which, which is which, yeah. yeah. So they, they, this is just such a love letter to the original. The minor 49ers The minor too. 49er as well, yeah. That's what made Be us excited it. back in the day, too. Because yeah. well, we knew all of this. When did you first see this? I saw this. I was very stoked for it. I wasn't crazy about the first one, as I have explained in the uh, previous episode, yeah. but this one I was very excited for knowing what it was going for and yes. what it looked like it was doing. Saw this for my birthday with a group of friends and my parents took us. I adored it when it came out. I loved it far more than the first one. The original one. Which, you know, again, lost me as a kid. Yeah. I'll never forget that pterodactyl ghost flying across the moon at the beginning. And um, Oh, yeah. And having a POV shot my the city. My, and my buddy Danny if you're watching this my buddy at the time he he leaned over to me he's like that's the pterodactyl ghost oh because God. he had already seen it and I was just like oh I'm catching up I'm finally getting to see it yeah first chance I could got it on DVD I was even excited hearing about it I watched a featurette shown on TV about it over and over again before it even it had uh, hit theaters Scooby-Doo 2 Scooby-Doo 2 damn and the second time I ever watched it was actually on a plane going to visit my grandparents nice because we'd go visit them in Carolina Carolina every summer and I was so happy about that but in hindsight it that must have sucked for the rest of the plane <laughs> because it was back when you know they showed one movie yeah, in the one over, movie in the overhead screens that came down yeah. and it was that hell yeah oh what movie we get oh <laughs> Scooby Doo too. Not me. This is peak, like this is peak. Travel. There's a god and she loves me. You know? <laughs> I was obsessed with this movie when it came out. Everything about it I loved. I saw this probably in, I think I must have seen it in theaters when it came out. I, I maybe I'd seen it right when it was like at the end of its run. Because there's like nobody in the theater when I saw it. Oh, really? But yeah, I just remember being like, oh, yeah, I remember this ghost. I remember this because I grew up with the original one all the time on reruns. Mm -hmm. Like every Scooby-Doo I where watched. Are, where are you? Scooby-Doo, where are you? Yeah. 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 I mean, shit, when we lived together, we watched a ton of the Scooby-Doo, where are you's together. I think the last time I watched both of these mm -hmm. before doing watching them again for this mm -hmm. was with you in yeah. college. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to talk about David Newman's score All right. in this. When this movie opens, the opening track is it's delicately sewn into my memory for life. <laughs> I, I fell in love with it the first time I heard it. It sets this childlike atmosphere with an almost with some gothic undertones. Yes. I, I like I E the choir going yeah. super hard on the score from the pterodactyl ghost like flying across the moon to the opening title of the looming shot of Coolsville, the score, it doesn't let up. And the opening credits set up what the movie is, too. Yeah. In a, in a sense, the pterodactyl goes flying through the Coolsville during the credits. It's, it's a great analogy for this movie is a theme park attraction. Yeah. You're about to go on a ride. Yes. That's really what it is. I forgot James Gunn wrote this. James Gunn wrote this. <laughs> That's wrote, right. I forgot he wrote both of them. Once he got big from Marvel and people looked him up more and then they realized... 
He did this? Yeah. And uh, let's not forget Roger Gosnell coming back and doing it a second time. He did the original one, also famous for Never Been Kissed. Never Been Kissed and the third Home Alone. Well, yeah. <laughs> did the Smurfs movies. Too. Oh, yeah, he yeah. did do those, didn't he? <laughs> These are much better than those. Though. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Coolsville has opened up a Coolsonian Criminology Museum. It's opened an exhibit on uh, criminology. It's, on it's No, it's got, it's a, it's a criminology museum and their grand opening is flaunting an exhibit of Mystery Inc.'s past exploits. Of what they've solved, mo monsters they've beaten, villains they've unmasked. A fun idea, honestly. Yes. Good. And now that we're getting into actually seeing them, hold on, hold on, I have something special here. Scooby-Doo pajama bottoms. Ah, ha, ha. Christmas pajama bottoms. There's one of him looking all smug on there that she's like, that's you, asshole. Can you imagine recording this in July and you wearing God. <laughs> Death. Their fans are hilarious, dude. Like they have Fred's their fan, own groups. Fred's fans are all like teens and teen, tweens, tweens and teen girls. And he's like, I got an ascot for each of you ladies. Daphne's fans are like these two fat weebs. <laughs> these, yeah, these two simps. Yeah. And um, who look like they never left their mother's basement. And yeah. also children, I guess. She Worst loved. mystery ink character ever. We love you, Daphne. Velma's fans all look like her. They're yeah. hilarious. <laughs> Lesbians. And this one. <laughs> This went over my head as a kid, of course. Shaggy finds his fans because he smells, he smells, <laughs> smells he the smells weed in the, the weed. He's like, uh, he's like, and, like hey, and all man, of them, all hey, of them look man, like, all up? of them look like they're out of half baked. Yeah, they're like, yo, man, we're just <laughs> hanging out. Scooby's fans are other dogs. They're dogs. It's, yeah. That's adorable. Yes. Uh, Alicia Silverstone in this. Yes. I saw the minute I saw her, I was like, mm, I want to watch Blast from the Past. Yeah. <laughs> She's an ice queen news reporter yes. who's just out to slander Mystery Inc. Constantly, essentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They have all the costumes of the monsters they've unmasked, and so many of them are just there. I'd go to this. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> Again, like we said, Tar Monster, Chickenstein, uh, Black Knight Ghost. There's so many references to the original cartoons in this. We know the pterodactyl ghost has been flying around, but he's there at the exhibit. Pretending to be he's an exhibit doing, himself. He's doing a Jurassic he's Park He's doing three. a Jurassic Park 3 <laughs> Quilliam <laughs> thing. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> frozen, <laughs> pretending, to, pretending to be a costume. Velma gets a love interest in this. Yes. In the form of Seth Green well, as the like, Remember, museum. like we talked about in the we, original one, she was supposed to be gay. It was kind of implied she was gay. Remember we well, talked she about had, that? Well, she had the guy that she was talking to. They were just friends. Oh, were they? Yeah, yeah, I remember. But <laughs> this one, it's like, no, no, no. Velma is heterosexual as shit. She's just awkward. So she, we're going to give her an other nerds. We're going to give her another awkward nerd. Enter Seth Green. Walking in slow motion to a romantic song. I love that scene where he slips and falls in slow motion. You see, but it's not the funny part. The funny part is a dude just walks past and steps over. Yes. On the floor. He's like, this happens constantly. <laughs> oh, that's just Patrick. Don't mind him. Yeah. He's the curator for this museum. Curator for the museum. It's sad. He asks Velma out on a date and she rejects him because yeah. she's she's just shy. She's too nervous. She likes him, but she doesn't know what to say. No wonder he got all of them to come back and do the voices on Robot Chicken. Yeah, because <laughs> he was friends with all of them. He's yeah. friends with all of them. Yeah. The, there's a strike of lightning and it just yes. breaks the glass yes. of this giant window in the museum. And then Daphne pulls the curtains back on the pterodactyl ghost exhibit. And that thing's alive. Oh, that it's alive. Or like screeching at her. Yes. Busts out of its glass case and just starts flying around. Inside, it, inside the building. Inside the building and starts picking up, picking up other costumes. The one thing about the monsters in this I love, they all have personality to yes, them. Yes, they do. Because they try catching the thing, which leads to what Shaggy and Scooby's dilemma is throughout the movie. That they're screw ups. That they're fuck ups. They yeah. don't, they, they, they attribute nothing to the team. But that's that is a really funny moment where they 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 think they've caught the pterodactyl ghost. They in some curtains. Yeah, yeah, they catch him. They they wrap some curtains around him and tie a rope. But then the rope, you know, just falls. The curtain yeah. comes back and the pterodactyl ghost is just pissed off standing there. The pterodactyl ghost wrecks a very nice banquet. They were going to it looks like they well, had Scooby and Shaggy kind of wrecked the banquet. Yeah. But it looks like they had like a fried build your own fried rice station. They were going to have people build make fried rice for you right there. Oh, really? It's really nice. Yeah. Or it was like an omelet station. There was a bunch of fires with individual pans. I go, oh my God, they were going to have cooks make you something there. It's pure chaos. I love the, it. Though. The pterodactyl ghost is dragging Scooby and Shaggy who are tied via rope to its yeah. leg and they're flying around the, the museum, but we get introduced to our villain, 
Mystery Incorporated. I'm just kidding. That's what the, the mask guy does in this movie. Mystery Incorporated. <laughs> he looks like um, if Doc Brown had a Doctor Doom mask. Yeah, that's a good way to describe him. He's got like the long, like stuck out hair. It looks like it's, I don't even know what it is. He's got an original looking design to yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a man in a mask. Man in a mask. Just like the originals. He doesn't have a name. He's they, just, they, 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 I forget what they name him in the actual cast. He's just like the masked villain or something like that. Well, that's what he is. No one knows who he is yet. It's some dude in some kind of pinstripe suit. Or just a cloak. Like a, a pinstripe Dar- cloak. Like a Darth Sidious cloak. Darth Sidious cloak. <laughs> and like I said, in a he's silver mask. In a silver mask. Essentially he, says, he just, you guys are horrible. You ruin Coolsville and I'm going to ruin you. Yeah, he shows up to talk shit. And then Daphne saves Shaggy and Scooby from getting hauled off by the pterodactyl ghost, which I thought that was one hell of an exit too. the pterodactyl ghost flies past him. And as it's and as the rope is going past him, he just grabs Grabs onto the rope, flies off with him and just, you know, he gets dragged by the pterodactyl ghost laughing maniacally. And the pterodactyl ghost managed to get away with what did they get? Did he get two costumes? He got two costumes. He took the 10,000 volt ghost, 10,000 volt ghost and the black and the black knight ghost. It's very interesting because one of the people that lives in Coolsville is Old Man Withers, right? Wickles. Wh- old Man old man Wickles, who is the original Black Knight ghost. Mm-hmm. So they're back at their hideout now. The Coolsville head HQ. Who, fun- who funds this? Dude, there's, they have a <laughs> nice fucking headquarters. This is, they have like a, the up-to-date, the Death Star didn't have anything this nice. <laughs> in that, this is like an up-to-date sci-fi room with all of the latest technology. I guess they must just get a lot of money from solving the mysteries. It's a (laughs) lucrative business breaking up dudes in costumes. This is where the movie's heart kind of comes comes around because Shaggy and Scooby, they didn't do anything at the uh, at the museum. In fact, they they made things worse. The gang's kind of talking shit about them. It's just like, oh, we all know how they can be. Yeah. They're feeling like they're not good enough for the team. They feel like they're a burden. And I just thought to myself, a lot of kids feel that way one way or another Mm -hmm. at some point. Like Shaggy even says at one point, I I wish for once I could do the right thing on purpose. Yeah. I have. I thought that to myself so many times as a kid. Sometimes there's just a lot of pressure put on you when you're when you're a kid. Yeah, exactly. Even though you um, you're a child, you're still learning along the way. But it's easy to get. It's so easy to get angry with yourself. Yes. Or compare yourself to others. I do like Velma's little pep talk to them at the end, too. Yeah. And which is something every kid should hear at least once, too. Sure. But the rest of the team, they go through their own dilemmas, too. Like Velma likes Seth Green. Fred is starting to realize, oh, maybe everybody thinks I'm a joke. Daphne is just kind of thinking maybe I don't bring anything to the team also. They're all trying to figure out what they do. Yeah. Yeah, they... (laughs) There's not a whole lot of this developed. In fact, some of these are wrapped up pretty easily. Yes. But, uh, but again, it's a kids movie. You know? Yes. <laughs> they they do some investigation into uh, Jonathan Jacobo. Jonathan Jacobo, who was the original pterodactyl ghost in the show. This guy named uh, just Johnny. Mm-hmm. And we'll we'll talk about that later in the facts section. Okay. I went and looked up his original origin story. So in this version, he is a He's guy just, who dressed up as a ghost of a pterodactyl to rob banks. To rob banks. And this backstory is kind of funny because it shows him in costume, like flying towards an armored truck. Yes. And I'm just like, what if they just unloaded on yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he would steal stuff, but he was put in prison and had his costume taken away from him. But he attempted an escape from, I, I guess, Alcatraz. Or the raft. <laughs> or the raft. It's <laughs> something like that. And perished in the water, which, to be perfectly honest with you, is the plot of a fucking what's new scooby-doo episode really yeah but not not jonathan jacobo or the character ghost just a ghost in san francisco oh. and then he goes yeah he tried to escape and then chris and i were watching it like she goes is this the plot of the second scooby-doo movie i go yeah this is the plot so he tried to escape from this <laughs> prison that was on an island and he apparently perished in the water and nobody has seen jonathan jacobo since he's played by tim blake nelson too. so just going full cuckoo head so (laughs) somebody has the pterodactyl ghost and they're only faced with one possibility lead lead to follow and that is old man wickles they go visit him at his uh creepy whip staff manor looking house he would have a lot of lawsuits on his hands for trapping people who come to his door you get to ring the doorbell once and he says go away but if you ring it again the floor falls through and you get put into a little you get put into like a a cage uh, ball a little hamster ball yeah and (laughs) And he's like the owner of the house will be back at seven to let you all out 
And uh, he's n- they're not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy if he sees Mr. Inc. Okay. Walking through. Well, neither are they if yeah. they have to be stuck there for hours. Yeah. He's got other people down there, too. Like, there's some solicitors and there's a Girl Scout. There's a Girl, Girl Scout. <laughs> and there's also, uh, I think, Mormons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you excuse, excuse me. Have you heard the good news? Yeah. There's cookies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They they break out. They let them out. They buy it, some cookies. Shaggy and Scooby buy some cookies from the Girl Scout. And it's not technically breaking and entering. He let them in. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little bit more along the lines. There's a moral yeah. gray area there. Yeah. Sure. Did he break in? Did they break in? Doesn't matter. They're inside now. Inside a, it seems like a wacky, <laughs> just like. It's Whipstaff Man from Casper. Yeah. Carnival ride. Yeah. Yeah. Shaggy and Scooby, they're trying to take things more seriously. They're trying to act more be like the serious. gang does. Yeah, they're, trying they're to be just more like, like Velma. Oh, Fred all or we do is just run and hide and screw things up and eat food. They're like, gang, let's split up and search for clues. Fred's like, he stole my line. <laughs> and um, Scooby, it is pretty funny. Scooby keeps coming across like not incriminating stuff, but stuff that would be considered clues. But instead, he always keeps like picking up like something else something yeah. else <laughs> he finds like a jur- secret journal do not read and a said, safe do not open instead what does he do he puts some sunglasses yeah on. <laughs> those aren't clues scoob those are just things you want <laughs> <laughs> again matthew lillard man. oh i love him in these matthew lillard arguably is probably one of the most loved millennial celebrities he's, like he's, we love oh, matthew man. lillard hackers scream scooby-doo and now he's in what is it that freddie Five, five, nights five Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. Come on the show. Come on the, come on the podcast. <laughs> come on the show, please. <laughs> Can't wait to see you in Five Nights at Freddy's too. <laughs> More Freddier. Freddy, Freddy's Revenge. Freddy's Revenge. Oh, wait. Freddy, Freddy's dead. <laughs> Freddy's dead. The final Fazbear. The, the final Fazbear. He's, he's fantastic. He they, leans heavily into it. He looks just like him too. Steals the show. And he does the voice amazingly. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't get over how good he is in both movies. Yes. Like he's... Uh, throughout both, he's the most consistent. Absolutely. Also, and he's probably the closest portrayal to the original show. Even people that dislike the original Scooby Doo, like critics, s- lauded Matthew Lillard's performance. They were like, it doesn't, like, everything sucks, but Matthew Lillard is as close to uh, Shaggy. At least he's good. Yeah. Matthew <laughs> Lillard is fucking Shaggy. He's we, literally that he's, is the closest to Shaggy we will ever get. They find a clue that, that uh, Peter Boyle. Uh, old, old man, man wickles. wickles is going to be at the faux ghost which i guess is a bar which we'll talk about in a oh, second oh yeah at seven at seven later does that- it say it just says tonight oh faux <laughs> ghost tonight okay it's just like that could have been written whenever there could have been a few <laughs> days ago yeah. it was and tonight. Like, we've got a clue <laughs> we've got a clue the gang also finds a clue they find the, the black knight ghost right no they find basically the necronomicon oh yeah so they <laughs> oh yeah they the the gang finds the Necronomicon. Yeah, it's a it's a scientific it's pretty instruction much the book, manual the book of the dead yeah. of how to turn inorganic matter into living matter. Yes, I guess. Yeah, how to create monsters. Yes, that's how we can take these costumes and just give them life or and animate them. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> which again is such a fun idea. But they run afoul the Black Knight Ghost, the, and he they has find been the Black Knight Ghost, who is reanimated. He is real now. He's, he's real. This big hulking Black Knight, and he just chases the gang around. He has a fight scene with Daphne. The developer finds his weakness, though. Just like every male, she kicks him right in the round Square tables. Square in the round tables. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, right in the round tables." And they book it out of there. They get everyone. They say, leave. We cannot be in here anymore. But that's pretty incriminating, though. Yes. That uh, the Black Knight ghost was there in Wickles Manor. And they found the book knowing how to reanimate them. Mm-hmm. Now There's that- a lot more suspects in this one. too. Yes. I appreciate that. They have a couple. They have a couple that. more suspects rather than Mr. Bean in the original. Yeah. Velma finds out that there's this new element or something that can remote remodium. Randomonium. Ran- randomonium. <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby decide they're going to investigate on their own. But they do this by pretending Scooby has rabies. So he's about to die and probably attack you all. Yeah. But so they like, just oh, looks they like just Sco- some whipped cream Sco- on his face. Scooby has rabies. And I go, oh, so he's going to die. He's like, dead. He's dead. We're that gonna dog's go outside dead. and get some fresh air. No, they go play hooky to go to the Fogos. They're going to the Fogos, which is now this is my favorite scene. This is a fun concept. This is a great scene. I guess all of the villains they unmasked ended up getting ended up relocating to Coolsville. Coolsville. <laughs> uh, I guess they all they either are from <laughs> Cools. Two ways to read this. They either are from Coolsville, and Coolsville is endless. It's all <laughs> Coolsville. 
All right. <laughs> Including like the, the desert, the the weird the Arctic. The Arctic, the the islands, <laughs> the weird New England lighthouse that they are in. All of it is Coolsville. Ever. Look at me, Fred. All that light touches is Coolsville. <laughs> this is you, my son. What, what's that shadowy place over there? That is also Coolsville. <laughs> that belongs to us, too. That belongs to us, too. The Faux Ghost is a... It's a bar. It's like a... Sea. On a pier. On like it's a, a wharf. Yeah, yeah, it's a pier side bar. Specifically dedicated, Specifically dedicated to the dedicated villains of Scooby-Doo. To all the villains that Mystery Inc. has unmasked and caught and put away. And they hate the mystery ink gang. Yeah. <laughs> this is a yeah. hey, this is a this is like what what do they call it in 1984? Like the the minute of hate or something like that. At like that thing. This is just them all the time. There's <laughs> there's dart boards with all of their there's faces. There's a whack a mole with, with their heads with, on yeah, it. Scooby. And when you hit him, it's like Zoinks, joy, zoinks. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's dart boards. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> With, but their, with their heads on it. Before they go in, they're surveilling the outside and they're like, wow, our, a bunch of villains are in there. Look, that's oh, they the know witch. Who each of yeah, these people the, are. That's the woman that was the witch and the, the witch witch There's is the witch. Ozark witch. There's the, Redbeard's ghost. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we can't go in there. So they dress up. At, what is their what is their alias? SD, S, it's me. S, SD S, Gree Crawley or something like that? It's us, the McCrawley brothers yeah. or something. SD McCrawley. In. We are in the house and ready to partay. Matthew Lowe is dressed like a... He's going to a St. Patrick's Day party. Yeah, he's got that. He's got like the 70s he's got an afro, afro with the sunglasses and the... And the, they're, they're just dressed like... And they're, they're dressed like Soul Brothers. Like, hell, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They got, they're got. ready to They're ready to boogie. Peter Boyle's got a great moment in this. Because they because Shaggy goes up to him to try to talk to him. Hey, and man, he says, we really appreciate your work. We're, We're big fans, fans of your yeah. work. He says, ah, you're young. You better... You should get out of this game while you can. Before you know? Mr. Ink but, busts you, I guess. Or, yeah, he has some sort of heart-to-heart -heart with him. And then he says... Well, I guess it makes you kind of grateful to Mystery Inc. for unmasking you. And Peter Boyle just says, I would kill those motherfuckers. <laughs> and he grabs a handful of peanuts and crushes them. He goes, if I ever get my hands on that, those I tear kids are their metal and dogs. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. And what so a great, what he a great. takes off and Shaggy's like, don't draw attention to yourself, Scooby. I got to go take a leak. And so then the Oz and then the lady who was the Ozark witch is just totally macking on Scooby. He's like, "You want to dance?" And it leads to this amazing dance, dance number sequence. where um, they have a live band here. Yeah. Apparently, I want to say this bar is apparently well patroned enough to <laughs> afford a live. Do you know how expensive that is? This band to is get a live band constantly in there. You got to give them a lot of drink tickets, or you got to do. They're doing covers. It seems like they're there all the time. This group is called. They Big have a tenure ship. <laughs> This group is called Big Brothers. Yeah. And uh, they do an amazing cover of Sly Stones. Thank you for Sly letting me be myself. Stone. Thank yeah. you for letting me be myself again. again. Do, 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 do. And Scooby is killing it on the dance floor. They're he's having the time having of his life. It brings in every, everyone's having a good time. There's a great reference. He's dancing with the, <laughs> again, the Ozark witch yeah. lady is macking on him yeah. hard. And uh, <laughs> everybody gets in on it. They all want to dance with him and everything. Yeah. Unfortunately, their disguises get revealed. Scooby's <laughs> wig goes flying into somebody's soup. And they have to jet the fuck out of there. They're like, thanks for having us. Bye. <laughs> and they jump down the garbage. <laughs> Meanwhile, it turns out the museum got broken into again. 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 And, st and they stole all the costumes. Yes. Seth Green is devastated. And Velma's attempt to turn him on has <laughs> also does failed. Does not work. So Patrick and Velma, Linda Carlini and Seth Green. Seth Green. <laughs> She's so nervous. She doesn't know what to do. And she seeks advice from Daphne. She's because she, he, Seth Green comes to visit them. How do I be? And Daphne essentially tells us like, be somebody else. You know, Daphne doesn't give correct advice, but I mean, Daphne, it, it's meant in the best way possible, but it's highly incorrect. She him. gives Velma, Lydia Carlini, a full latex body suit in, <laughs> in red, I think in orange, in orange, red, the reddish orange comes down the stairs. And I guess Seth Green and Fred are just like, you know, just hey, how's it going, chatting? She comes down and he goes, Velma? Because he's like that. And she, what does she say? Who's your Who's mommy? Who's your mommy? And he's like, my, my mommy? mommy? <laughs> it's, 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 see, back then, back then it's super cringe and you're like, what the fuck? But nowadays with the internet and Gen Z, what it is to be like, you are my mommy. <laughs> 
<laughs> on, online. Oh, God. But she's stuck in that bodysuit for a little bit. She's trying to impress him. Yeah. She, yeah, because she doesn't know how else to talk to him. <laughs> While this also was happening, Alicia Silverstone's character, not Gail Weathers, has been putting out news reports where she takes their statements out of context to make it seem like they're like, man, we're too big for you. Fuck Coolsville. <laughs> I think Coolsville sucks. I think Coolsville, I think Coolsville no, sucks. Don't record that. And just to rub it in one more time, because Daphne starts saying, I think Heather Jasper Howe is the masked person. I think it might be her. Right on cue, right he on shows cue. up. Mystery Incorporated. Incorporated. On top of the museum, and there's, and I'm just like, someone shoot him? There's, someone? Like, <laughs> there's firefighters and armed like authority down there just like also all just looking up at him as he talks <laughs> also you might want to note like whenever mystery Inc. shows up this guy shows up so maybe just have somebody there ready to go because <laughs> what happens is he like he's not gonna show up when they're like a mile away and they're like mystery oh hang on no he's always <laughs> there to rub it in their faces just be like you yeah. guys suck you can't stop me seth green is so angry because he's the curator of this museum yeah like his stolen my exhibits like his life's work is like just down the drain rage yeah so he apparently has gone to the docks where scooby and shaggy are by the fogos by the fogos and he is just like muscling the shit out of he is extorting people in an alley being like tell me what the fuck it is (laughs) yeah for information stop wasting my time and uh, shaggy and scooby are just like whoa dude that was you, that's you and he's also like hey i'm just trying to do this tough guy thing and then he scares the shit and yeah. then he just starts scaring them ah! no <laughs> he starts jump scaring them <laughs> and that's leads to like the best line in the movie he's just like patrick i bet we you'd love to do this all night but we gotta make like your personality and split, and split. <laughs> <laughs> matthew lillard and seth green being together i was like oh what a nice little without a paddle reunion yeah yeah because <laughs> they see old man wickles on the side to follow him yes into the abandoned mining town. Yes. He, th- some kind of theme park. Uh, some sort mine. of old theme park that's all run down. Again, another theme park. Yes. <laughs> so it, he's, they're in another fucking theme park. But with actual mines in it. Real mines that have things like actual precious minerals in it. The randomonium. <laughs> randomonium, <laughs> I guess. They run afoul of one of the skeleton men who have come to life. Yes. And these guys... Oh my god, they they're, were my favorite part. They're just as a two kid. little dudes with big like eye heads. Like their whole eye is their head. And every time they try anything, they just bu- they break yeah. apart into bones because they're real. Yes. And they're nothing but skeletons. Yeah. In the original Scooby Doo cartoon, these are just dudes in skeleton costumes running around a graveyard. But now they're real skeletons. Now they're real skeletons with like one eye. Like they, this is the direction and they took. And they're hilarious. It. I'm yes. sorry, but they held their 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 shtick held up for me in this. Because they're yes. not in it a lot, but when they are, it's funny. Yes. Because they're just Yeah. And they just break apart. They like turn. They can turn themselves into like whatever they want. Yeah. And everything. There's a smart one. There's a dumb one. They could take their heads off and chuck them at people. What we're we gonna do tonight, brain? <laughs> Same thing we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> Try to kill Mystery Inc. <laughs> right. Shaggy and Scooby. They come across a secret lab. Yes. With a bunch of things Herbert West would probably be experimenting yes. with. Yes. It's like that scene from Emperor's New Groove where it's like, where's the llama? Where's the one yeah, with the llama? Where's the yeah. humor? Oh Try this God. one. No, no, no. This is the right one. This is a crab. But you're right. They start drinking all this shit and Scooby turns into an in the mouth of madness monster. Yes, that's actually the most terrifying <laughs> he part. He turns into the Tasmanian devil at one point. Shaggy turns into a girl. Shaggy turns into a girl. And <laughs> we talked about this. how bad the CGI is in the first one. It's also pretty bad in this one, too. This shot looks horrible. It's it's Matthew Lillard's head superimposed on like a girl's body. Yeah. And it's I've like I've got that. a chick's body. <laughs> and again, this is really not being so much for kids. They almost blow themselves up, but they do. The gang finds them. Velma. Daphne and Fred follow them to the old mining. They go to the mines and they see old, old man mining Wickles. amusement park. Turns out he is up to something. He's been nefariously planning to get a loan to revitalize the mining town to the make theme it park. an amusement park for children. And there's some jokes in here that just do not age well. In one being like, we will get these children to work in the mine for 18 hours a day and we'll have all the miners we've ever needed. And I go, oh, God. <laughs> and now I get the joke. It's child labor and stuff. And the joke is that miner who mines and minor children sound similar. That's the joke. There's your old James Gunn coming oh, out. Oh, God. <laughs> they find the machine that, that makes they the use monsters. to make monsters. They crank that shit into overdrive. And, and, and Ver- Shaggy and Scooby, again, making things worse in this movie, inadvertently 
<laughs> thinking that it's like a DJ booth, <laughs> activate the machine and start creating all the so monsters. So we've got that. So we've got the ten thousand volt ghost now alive. We've got the tar monster now alive. We've got, got the Captain, zombie now alive. Captain we've got Cutler, Captain Cutler and I'm the assuming minor forty nine. Minor forty nine, and I'm assuming Redbeard just off screen somewhere because they got his ship. Yeah, his ship shows up <laughs> yeah. flying around like it's Peter Pan or some yeah. shit. So <laughs> I'm assuming he's been activated somewhere and is just off screen somewhere. Yeah, he's on the cutting room floor. So seems like it. <laughs> and so now they've got multiple ghosts and monsters. And to they're deal all with. real. And these are full fledged monsters. They have powers like the, the 10,000 volt the, ghost uses electricity. Oh, that yeah. The, uh, the minor 49 can just breathe fire. Yes. The tar monster. Oh, dude, he's the blob. He's just tar monster. He's, yeah. he's the blob. Yeah. The zombie doesn't do shit. He's just creepy looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like Uncle Fester. Yes. The makeup and costuming yes. on the ones that aren't totally CGI, they look fantastic. Yeah, they look The great. zombie in Minor 49er especially. Yes. Captain Cutler looks badass in this. Dude, yeah. he was always my favorite as a kid. They, they left out they left out mine, uh, but we'll get to it in the facts section. Okay. He, he is in the background of one of the shots, though. The CGI ones, they're pretty dated, but the skeleton men, again, they show up to chase Shaggy and Scooby, and they have like this fun rip roaring ride down a hill where Shaggy and Scooby are basically surfing on like trash can lids. Yes. And the skeleton men are like going after them because one of them turned into a, a, a pair of skis. Yeah, ski. <laughs> one of them's the ski and one of them's the skier. It's a funny, it's a funny con. It just looks funny. This whole yeah. movie's absurd. They and managed to get away. They're all in the gangs, all in their mystery machine, but the ghosts and monsters are running wild through Coolsville. They can't go yes, back to the because, original, but they steal the control panel, the control panel and the masked man shows up and says, monsters, you need to find mystery Inc. without because without that, I'm fucked. Yes. Go tear, tear apart Coolsville right now. Monsters. I just made <laughs> Did find, <you>? find <laughs> mystery incorporated citizens turn in mystery Inc. like the tar monsters yeah. just like grabbing people. Yeah. I was like, are people dying? I think, I think I think some of the Coolsville people are dying. So they go to the old high school clubhouse, which is a shed next to, I guess, in a swamp. Yeah. A sure. shed in a swamp in school that hasn't been touched in years, but still looks perfect. Shed in, in Coolsville swamp where the power's still working with the generator. They discover that there's a way to reverse it using the control panel. They just have to reconfigure it yes. somehow. So they can suck all the monsters back in and turn them into costumes again. <laughs> I love this part where they they roll up to the old clubhouse and it's just like angsty teen song, just like on the outside <laughs> looking in. Yeah. And Fred's just like, never thought I'd be back here again. And I'm he's, just like, he's what is this Dawson's Creek He's a really shit? sad boy at that moment, yeah. <laughs> and Shaggy and Scooby have that sad moment where they're yeah. just like, we've just made everything worse. Again. They have saved the day, but they don't ever see it that way. They, mm -hmm. they, they just think like, we just do it accidentally. We're just yes. screw-ups, you know? And now this time our actions have these real consequences. Yes. People are dying. Yeah, people, it seems like people are dying. <laughs> these are, these people, these, these, these ghosts, these monsters are killing people in the city. I mean, like. the tar monsters is going to straight up kill them all. I the think he's too. just absorbing them and they're going to suffocate. It's the blob. He's the yeah, blob. He's the blob. This one has a lot of fun, creative set pieces to it. Like Fred has a motorcycle joust with the the Black Knight ghost at the one point. Dead or alive. Uh, Scooby drives the mystery machine yeah. for one. Scooby fighting the tar monster. Yes. That's a really good scene. And I think moments like that kind of make this one a lot more memorable mm -hmm. for me, at least, than that first one. Sure. If you love the original Scooby Doo cartoons, I think you find more enjoyment out of Scooby Doo Monsters Unleashed than the original Scooby Doo movie the zaniness is is on point and the characters are are there as much as they were in the first and better developed so i would i would recommend this for millennial nostalgia this is the top if you watch this as a kid and you haven't seen it in a minute you want to check them out you'll go on a trip you watch it's these, a great time whether you feel no matter any kind of way you feel about it i'm ready to dig Show into some fact, facts. facts just a reminder these are real facts about this movie scooby-doo monsters unleashed that i've researched and nick has never seen these before he's going to take time to read them for you and again these are real facts, just with some other stuff included. Fact number one. Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed was released on March 26, 2004 to a $29.4 million opening weekend. It made $84 million domestically while in theaters, placing it at number 1,000... 49 on the inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Yes. Some of its competition in the spring slash summer of 2004 included The Passion of the Christ, directed by a racist, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, directed by a genius, 
And finally, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, starring Oh My God, She's Literally Me, Kate Winslet. <laughs> <laughs> she's like the, she, it's like Michael Sarah's the version she's of Oh My God. Blue, what, what is she, the blue haired manic pixie dream yeah, girl? Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. It's <laughs> the same thing with like Ramona Flowers and, and any Zoe Dation yeah, yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially like that. So, really quick with this, uh, I will say this for Harry Potter's, the third one's the best. Professor Vaskin? Yeah, yeah. This is scariest. Too. Yeah, it's the scariest. <laughs> Who? Because it's Kiran. Alfonso Kiran that Quran. does that. Looks, it looks so different than the first two. I remember seeing that. You know who they were originally trying to get to make that? Chris Columbus again? D- Guillermo del Toro. Oh, hell yeah. He turned it down because he wanted to make Hellboy so bad. Dude, I understand that. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, let's talk about the international box office numbers. Internationally, this one made $96 million. So for a total of 180, 181 million total worldwide. Right on. So combined, this is significantly less than, than what the first than one what made. The first one made. This mm. is this was considered kind of a flop because, oh, because you know, people went and saw the first one and they did not like how it went. They didn't like how it went, but they made so much money. They said, we'll do a Guilty. second one. <laughs> they said they'll do a second one. And they, they went and did this In fact. They didn't. They, there was a third one planned. Mm-hmm. There was a third one planned. And because of how well it did not do or well how poorly it did did. they scrapped it fact number two freddie prince jr took a pay cut on this sequel in order to boost the salaries of his co-stars but was furious at the studio for refusing to pay them saying quote i remember thinking hold up who's giving them the raise me or y'all like we made you guys three quarters of a billion dollars you can't afford to pay them what i'm already making on this screw that prince jr said the studio then allegedly leaked his salary to the press in order to get him to comply. Prince Jr. stated that this made sure he would not return for the third movie. Yeah, so that was the issue with it. Props he, to him for sticking to yeah, his guns, because, though. you know, it's, it's one of those things. Made a lot of fucking money, like way more. And the studio said, no, we're not going to give, you know, can you, can you take a pay cut so that Matthew Lillard and... Linda Cardellini could get some more money. And it's like, are you fucking? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing. This is just like fuck studios. Like, that's the same yeah. thing. Like, it's crazy that you could not pay them. It's kind of fucked. But he says the studio leaked his salary. Studio denies it. So I put allegedly, but they probably did. Mm. <laughs> We're not. It, listen, who would do it? Who would? Leak the salary, you know, yeah. that's essentially a move to be like, oh, look, Freddie Prince Jr. is getting paid more than his female co-stars. And he's probably like, yeah, but that's not right. <laughs> Pay yeah. them the same amount. I, I brought this up to you first. <laughs> Fact number three, a third installment was planned. However, it was scrapped due to the second not being as financially successful as the first film. According to James Gunn, it involved the mystery gang going to Scotland to investigate a series of monster attacks, discovering that the monsters were victims and were being controlled by an evil human, which would have forced Scooby and Shaggy to confront their own biases. That's right. Shaggy and Scooby are racist towards monsters. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been thinking, because you know, they're always scared. That's their thing. They're scared of monsters. But this would have been like the monsters being like, we are enslaved by this evil human. That's a good twist. That yeah, is. I actually would have really enjoyed watching and a that. Pretty good st- and a pretty good lesson. It's yeah. just like, hey, things aren't always what they seem. Exactly. Appearances aren't everything. Great, mo- great movie again for kids. Simple one. I would have loved it. Too bad we'll never see it. Too bad. Maybe one day. Maybe one day if there's enough of a push, get them all back and be like, come on, let's do it. Let's do an older Scooby-Doo crew. I- I'd love to see it. Fact number four. The pterodactyl ghost is based on the villain of the same name from the episode titled Hang In There, Scooby-Doo. Season 2, Episode 3 of The Scooby-Doo Show from 1977. However, the character was very different. While in the movie he was a bank robber, in the original cartoon he was a struggling music lover just trying to sell pirated music tapes. Mystery Inc., a bunch of snitches. We seriously busting guys for ripping off record label executives? (laughs) That's quite another. Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is like there's a ghost of a pterodactyl terrorizing this area. And in the mountain... There's a room which is like a radio station where he's just selling pirated, making pirated music tapes. And then they bust that he's a, a human because they see the pterodactyl ghost just get into a car and start driving it full of pair of tapes. And they're like, <laughs> I don't think pterodactyls drive cars. And I go, great idea, Velva. Good job out there. Uh, the What a Story Mark. This is the most interesting fact I found about the movie. And I've written down, Nick has never seen this, and he's going to give it a rating from one to five marks. And the vein of our hero, Tommy Rizzo. <laughs> 
What a story, Mark. All the monster costumes seen in the Criminology Museum exhibit were actually fully functional, meaning they could all indeed be worn. The plaques accompanied them also included trivia on the specific costume based on the lore from the original cartoon. Some notable inclusions that did not get much screen time were the Rambling Ghost, Redbeard's Ghost, and Nathan's favorite, the Spooky S Space Kook. Yes. There was also a screen test for the unused Ghost Clown costume that Nathan is pulling up and I'm going to give a live reaction to right now. Holy <laughs> Christ! <laughs> now, listen, this is supposed to be a fun children's show. This is not fun at all. It's probably appearing right now there right now <laughs> it's look at that <laughs> look at that thing audience what the hell it's no wonder they were like yeah cut that uh don't put that out there that looked like something out of killer clowns yeah man. <laughs> like a killer clowns it's like fucking silent hill or something like that even oh uh, you can see something like that <laughs> very gacy yeah looking yeah. very uh, <laughs> It's it's really spooky looking. Uh, I'm glad they did not. It looked like the one clown from Cabin in the Woods. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Or, or the end of Zombieland. Look at this fucking clown. <laughs> Everybody's like trying look to look at this fucking clown. Yeah, God. <laughs> what would you rate this out of one to five marks, Nick? This gets a three out of five. All right, fair enough. I really just uh wanted to ask you, besides spooky space coog, what are some of your favorite episodes of the old show? Because oh, a lot of Scooby Doo stuff we talked about in the previous episode was with Cameron. I think some of my favorites is obviously I love the Black Knight Ghost. It's the original one. Mm -hmm. I love the one where it's <laughs> there's the one where for some reason Scooby Doo is supposed to inherit a lot of money with the like the the Confederate old Confederate guy. Scooby he Doo meets the Boo Brothers. No, no, no. That that's a different one. But that's oh. a, that's a good one. That, that's the <laughs> that's a separate one. But we're talking about the original show, right? Okay. Yeah. There's this one where he's supposed to inherit the money along with like this guy's uh, family. And he goes, all you have to do to inherit my fortune is stay a night in my mansion. And then they're like, that doesn't sound so hard. He goes, the house is haunted. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a recording. It's like the house is haunted. Good luck. <laughs> it's like that, that's, that's all it is. And I go, what kind of extortion is that? And it's the two like phantoms. With the chains? The chain phantoms. Those things, one, dude, those things scare Those are kids. scary. Yeah. Those are scary. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I like the one where it's the 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 robot at the carnival, too. Mm -hmm. That one, that one's always good. And finally, there's this one where the they I think it's like a, a what a night for a hex or something. What the hex is happening where they they imagine that like people are getting aged super old and mm -hmm. then they turn into bones. But my favorite is the ghost pops out and is like, I told you, leave this place. Don't ever come back. And then they just look at him and he looks at them and just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just turns and walks away. And they're like, where did he go? It's like he walked down the hallway. Is that the guy with the tiki mask? No, no, no. That's like the witch doctor guy, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's the, the, this is a guy in like a in like a manner. He goes, leave and then just leave. <laughs> and I go like, where'd he go? It's like, he's right there. He walked down the hallway. Leave. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> just go. I'll be back. He just walks away. I was like, he didn't leave. He's right there. He's off screen. I would have loved to have seen the, uh, the wolf, the wolf man. Oh yeah. He would have been cool. They could have made yeah. some cool costume out of that. They one. left the creeper out too of this one, man. The creeper would have been so Dude, fun. the creeper is like the most ideal one. Mm -hmm. Like that's, 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 that's great. He's an iconic monster. Yeah. He says his own name like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Scooby-Doo monsters unleashed up uh, 70, 70 right now. A 70, 70. Love it. Very a lot nice. of fun. Uh, has its problems, but honestly, simple, turn your brain off and there's more development in this. There's a lot of development and actually I enjoy watching that. Oh, that's nice to hear. You gave it such a high, high mm -hmm. number. Uh, 81, 81. Fair enough. I just, this, this, this brings such a smile to my face watching it again. 70 plus 81 divided by two is a 75.5. I was having an issue with the math for a second there. <laughs> Never my strong suit. That's why I run this podcast. 75.5 for Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Well said. Fair. Love it. It's a goofy, tacky little kids movie. It comes and goes, but it's it's so much less cynical and acidic than the first one. Yes. Too. I appreciate that. For Scooby-Doo fans, it's most likely going to hit. Because it's more of a PG version of the cartoon, especially bringing in the, bringing the old monsters out. It kind of hit me with this one. It feels more like they set out to make a kid's movie that adults could find fun in. Yes. Whereas the first one felt more like the opposite. They set out to make an adult movie that the kids, kids could find fun in. Yes. And so 
I appreciate this one more. In the vein to Monsters Unleashed, and we're gonna, you know, we played this game with Cameron last week, as well last time, as you might remember. Uh, Scooby Doo has faced a lot of villains over his years uh, fighting crime on screen. Mm -hmm. So this is I like a segment I like to call Scooby Dooby. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> now, one of these, <laughs> I, now I, I need to workshop that a little bit more. Uh, one of these. One of these monsters and plot lines I'm going to give you is an actual Scooby Doo episode from a, from a series. Okay. The other one, Chat GPT wrote for me. Option number one: When the mystery machine crashes in the front of an ice cream factory, it appears Shaggy and Scooby's dream has come true. Until they discover that phantoms are haunting the factory, the Technicolor ice cream phantoms tell the gang to leave the factory immediately or doom will come to all of them. And that is from season one, episode 15 of the Scooby-Doo show, 1976, The Ghost of the Bad Humor Man. Option two. The Mystery Incorporated gang arrives in a town overshadowed by the legend of the Phantom Express, an apparition that appears as a train conductor on a ghostly train. The gang investigates the history of the town's tragic past, leading to the discovery of a long lost mystery. And that's season one, episode six, of the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, 1984, called Scooby-Doo and the Spectral Rail. Which one is real? Which one is real? Which one's real? Just tell me which one you think is real. Because the other one has to be ChatGPT. The train one. You are incorrect. <laughs> really? The ice cream ghosts are the real Scooby-Doo oh. villains. There's these three ones that show up. One is vanilla, one I'm... is strawberry, and one is chocolate. The oh, Technicolor really? <laughs> ice cream phantoms, they're haunting, a, they're haunting an ice cream factory. That's awesome. So that is a real Scooby-Doo Scooby uh, monster that they had to, to unmask. Crap. The other one, is, I asked I asked ChatGPT to help me write Scooby-Doo villains, and it goes, as we talked about, it goes, yeah, what do you want? And I go, I don't know. Make it something with a train from the 1800s. And it goes, got you. And it wrote the entire that thing could for me. That I could know, totally that, be I know, episode, I know, though. I know. You're right. But one of them is, one of them's not. Oh, man. It's I'm, hard. It's hard to, it's hard because it's so ridiculous. It could be either one. Dude. One could be real. And, but you know what? Scooby-Doo also gets fucking crazy for some points. Thank you for listening and watching for this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast, on TikTok at one and a half white guys, and now on our YouTube where you're watching this, hopefully at one and a half white guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we kind of sort of maybe kind of little bit talk about the movie. Yeah, mostly we just talk about millennial nostalgia. All right, gang. Mostly talk about ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> gang, let's split up and look for clues. What do you think? You go that way. I'll go home. All right. <laughs> Long live uh, 20th anniversary of Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed. Go watch it. Absolutely. 